So let's start with what is the classical Hall effect uh, discovered by Edmund Hall at uh, Johns Hopkins University in the 19th century. So when you have a, an ordinary piece of metal, let's say a wire or a, a sheet of metal, in order to drive current through it, because it has electrical resistance, if it's not superconducting, you need a, a push. You need to push the electrons through it with an electric field. And that requires having a voltage drop from one side of the wire to the other. And the, the electric field points in the direction that the current is flowing. Edwin Hall discovered that if you put a very strong magnetic field perpendicular to that uh, direction of the current flow, the electrons would get pushed sideways by what's called the Lorentz force, a velocity dependent force that uh, pushes the electron at right angles to the velocity and right angles to the magnetic field. So it pushes the electrons off to one side and a voltage drop appears now at right angles to the current flowing, and that's called the Hall voltage. So this uh, phenomenon is used in sensing magnetic fields, it's used in your automobile, um, for in what used to be the distributor, <laughs> um, it's now an electronic circuit that uses these Hall sensors, and it has a number of other practical uses. The quantum Hall effect takes place in a very thin layer of electrons, essentially a two-dimensional sheet of electrons or electron gas, in a very strong perpendicular magnetic field when the system is cooled down near absolute zero. And it was discovered that uh, independent of all the microscopic details and the size and shape of the sample and exactly what the sample was made of and where any dirt and imperfections in the sample, nevertheless, when you put a certain current through the sample, you got a certain voltage. And the ratio of that Hall voltage to the current has units of electrical resistance, ohms. And uh, it was discovered that you got a universal value for that ratio. And that resistance of, is called the quantized Hall resistance, discovered by Klaus von Kutzing. And it's uh, 25,812.80 ohms, approximately. And its value is actually given by the ratio of two fundamental constants. Planck's constant divided by the electron charge squared. Completely universal and fundamental, even though it's taking, this phenomenon is taking place in a dirty, not very perfect, handmade, human-made sample. So that was a huge surprise. Then uh, there was a second huge surprise that some of the, uh, it's possible to see fractional quantum numbers in this system and under other special circumstances where the electron interactions are important. So this led to a huge advance in our theoretical understanding of how a large system of interacting electrons can form a, a surprisingly subtle and complex quantum ground state. Further progress after that led to the realization that there could be even more complicated uh, quantum states containing um, kind of quantum defects, quantum vortices where there were little loops of current flowing around and people realized that those objects could actually be used to form quantum bits. And the way you would change the state of those quantum bits is to um, physically move them around each other, to braid them uh, around each other. And the mere act of moving one particle around the other changes the, the state of this particle. 
And so it, there exists a, an idea for <clears throat> what's called a topological quantum computer in which the, you would use these objects and braid them around to do the operations. The reason this is an interesting idea is I mentioned earlier that quantum systems are very sensitive to small perturbations and noise and imperfections. But this particular quantum state, type of state, is very robust against that. You can make local perturbations at any spot in the system and nothing happens to the quantum state because the information is kind of spread out kind of holographically. It's spread out and shared amongst many of these particles. And you can't, no local perturbations can destroy that information. So the hope is that this would be very robust against noise and decoherence. Experimentally, it's very, very challenging. And um, people are beginning, they definitely have seen these uh, vortex objects. They have started to move them around each other. There's some evidence that you can see these um, uh, fractional statistics and non-abelian statistics, the fancy words for these changes in state when you uh, braid one around the other. But it's still very, very early days and um, uh, the physics has not yet been really clearly demonstrated experimentally. But um, again, it's too early to say it's not going to work for any, any piece of hardware.